Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Oliver, a life transition coach at Dr. Lisa Oliver, LLC. I want to talk to you about the various types of grief you may encounter, not just after losing a loved one, but also specific types of grief you may have already experienced as a caregiver before your loved one's passing. The first type of grief you may have experienced while your loved one is still living is ambivalent grief. This is comprised of two components. The first component involves the loved one being physically absent but psychologically present. This occurs in situations such as when a loved one is classified as a missing person or when someone in the military is listed as missing in action. The second component, which you likely experience with your loved one, is the individual being physically present but psychologically absent. This can happen when a loved one's cognitive abilities are significantly impaired, leading to changes in their personality, behavior, and the ability to communicate. Despite their physical presence, they may no longer recognize or connect with family members emotionally or intellectually. This may create a sense of loss and grief for the relationship that once existed, even though the person is still physically present. It's a complex form of grief because the person is still alive, but the essence of who they were seems to have vanished. Another type of grief you may have experienced while your loved one is still living is anticipatory grief. This occurs when we anticipate the impending death of that loved one. It involves imagining life without them and grappling with various aspects of their eventual passing, such as what will the death be like, how people will react, changes in social situations, and adjustments to finances. These thoughts and concerns preemptively shape our grieving process before the actual loss occurs. Before delving into the grief they may accompany the loss of your loved one, it's essential to address a complex emotion you may experience. The complex emotion you may feel is relief. This feeling of relief, while natural, given the intense demands of caregiving, can sometimes be accompanied by guilt. For instance, experiencing a night of uninterrupted sleep for the first time in a while after your loved one's passing may both the sentiment of relief, quickly followed by guilt. Remember, you alone understand the sacrifices made in caring for your loved one, so don't allow anyone or anything to undermine your feelings of relief. Now I want to address grief that may occur when experiencing the death of anyone you love, not just a loved one with dementia. In today's society, everything is quicker. You can get on your phone, go to Amazon.com, and if you lived in a big city, chances are you can get that item delivered to your doorstep within two hours. Society has us thinking that everything is or should be like that. Many things are, but grief is not one of them. Let me share with you how I experience grief. I feel that grief feels like a coat you never ever take off, but eventually it does become lighter. When you first learn about the death of your loved one, you are numb, like wearing a heavy down coat. You don't feel much, you can't move around much, you are in a fog. After a while, you may take on the trench coat. It still covers you from your neck to your calf, but you're able to move around a bit more. Perhaps you return to work and you're getting back into the quote unquote swing of things. Eventually, you may get into that spring jacket. Things are okay. Then you will hear, see, or smell something that reminds you of that loved one on you right there in that heavy winter coat. But you will not stay there as long as you did the first time you had on that heavy down coat. Soon you will go back to the spring jacket leading to a summer windbreaker. Life happens and you have another heartbreak and you are wearing that heavy down coat again. That is how grief is. We never get over it. We love that individual. Why would we? Another thing to know is grief is not discreet. We do not move from the heavy down coat to the summer windbreaker in a nice uniform fashion. It's messy. You could be sad the loved one died, but be mad that the loved one died. There is no right or wrong way to grieve. We must acknowledge the grief and work through it. Research shows that grief, if we do not acknowledge and make time for our grief, can appear in behaviors such as overeating, overspending, reckless driving, overconsumption of alcohol, and sexual promiscuity. As I close, I want you to know that you are not alone in the sorrow you are feeling. Please seek support. There is no need to suffer alone. All types of support are available. There are churches that provide grief support, and you do not have to be a member of that church. If your loved one was in a hospice, there is bereavement support. There are national programs that provide support. Even if there is a charge, ask for a scholarship. You may have noticed that I did not mention a time period. That's because everyone experiences grief in their own way. Regardless, 
you're going to be okay. Give yourself grace and time. There is no one way to experience grief. Your journey is your own.